Good evening and welcome to Words of Life's Wednesday evening service. My name is Richard Moore. I'm one of the pastors here. And it is an honor and a privilege to be able to minister the word of God to you this evening. We're so thankful that you've joined us. And uh, if you're joining us because uh, uh, you're expecting Pastor Samuel Rodriguez, I have some, uh, some, some good news and some uh, 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 bad news a little bit. <laughs> um, uh, we regret... <laughs> Uh, that we've had to postpone Rev Reverend Samuel Rodriguez tonight and tomorrow. Um, but however, the good news is that he will be with us for the word of his power, uh, March 21st through 28th, and that's 2021. Um, but tonight I will be ministering. I will be continuing our series on health and healing, or God's will is healing. And, um, and so, uh, but we, we had a few things arise here, and uh, he will not be with us. But uh, we're glad you're joining us anyways. And so we're going to have church tonight. Um, but uh, if you're viewing for maybe the first time or uh, maybe this is your second or third time with us, we have something that we'd like to say to you. And we just call you blessed in the name of Jesus. If you're watching by way of internet, we would ask you a request. If you could follow us uh, or subscribe to our YouTube channel, uh, comment and share. If you know anybody that needs uh, healing or needs a boost of faith concerning uh, receiving their healing from the Word of God, um, I would uh, advise you to share this message this evening because we're going to be talking about the will of God uh, in action, or Jesus is the will of God in action tonight. And, uh, uh, but uh, let's see, a few announcements here before we get into the service. Number one, our Sunday morning services are at 10.30 a.m. They are open uh, to members and to guests. Uh, we do not have our children's church and our youth ministry open just yet. Um, we are just taking it week by week. And right now, South Florida and I guess the nation is, um, you know, dealing. Well, here in South Florida, we're dealing with the beginning, I guess, of a, a third wave of sorts of covid so um, we're just taking it week by week, uh, day by day, making sure that everybody's safe and sound. And uh, we're, we're uh, honoring the uh, face mask uh, issuing and also social distancing in our services. And there's only one service that's open, and that is our Sunday morning service at 1030 a.m. And so if you do have children, if you have youth, uh, then we have uh, something for the youth minute or we have something for youth, uh, youth aged kids. We have something called Iron Groups with Pastor Q Fire. You just have to go to our website at wordsoflife.com to find out more information about that. Um, they're online Zoom groups, uh, Bible study groups. And then we have for Children's Church, for uh, preschoolers, we have Bible story time. And then also for elementary, we have animated Bible lessons, which you can find at wordsoflife.com. Or you can find them on our YouTube channel. Our midweek service and our Friday evening service, they're both at 7.30 p.m. And uh, they are online only. They're not open to members or guests uh, due to the fact we just try to keep everything safe and sound, touchless uh, experience, and so on and so forth. Um, but uh, if you have any prayer requests, uh, we would uh, like you to send them in to uh, uh, wordsoflife.com. There is a link there. Uh, for prayer requests, you can also call the ministry at 305-653-8155, extension 100. And then, uh, as far as prayer for the nation, uh, prayer for the nation, that's with myself on YouTube. Uh, it starts at 7.30 a.m. in the morning, Tuesdays through Fridays. This week, of course, we didn't have it today. Um, it was canceled as well. Tomorrow we will not be having prayer at 7.30 a.m., but we'll pick up again Friday morning at 7.30 a.m. And then next week, which is the week of Thanksgiving, we'll be having prayer Tuesdays, or Tuesday and Wednesday. And then Thursday and Friday we will not be having prayer. And then to, to give you a little bit more of a heads up, the following week, the first week of December, uh, there will be no prayer because my wife and I, um, we're going to go celebrate our anniversary and her birthday. So um, I will be praying specifically with my wife, and that is all, okay? If you want prayer, then call the ministry, 305-653-8155, extension 100, or give us, a, give us an email. So, um, but let's, uh, that's all. Actually, I'll, I'll rehearse this one more time for those of you that are just joining us. 
Um, we regret we will not be having Pastor Samuel Rodriguez tonight or tomorrow morning or tomorrow evening. Um, however, the good news is that he will be joining us for the Word of His Power Conference in 2021, which is March 21st through the 28th. And he will be alongside Kenneth Copeland, Dr. Bill Winston, Jesse Duplantis, and more. And uh, it will be a tremendous week. And, um, and so we'll, we'll look forward to that. But uh, go with me tonight to Proverbs, the fourth chapter and the 20th verse. This is our foundational scripture for these teachings on God's will is healing. God's will is healing. <clears throat> the past, uh, I believe this is the fourth or the fifth message in this series. And uh, this is... This is the foundational scripture, verse 20 of, cha of Proverbs chapter 4. And it says, my son, attend to my words, incline your ears unto my sayings. Let them not depart from your eyes and keep them in the midst of your heart. For they are life unto those that find them, and they are health to all their flesh. So keep your heart or your spirit with all diligence, for out of it flows the issues of life. And of course, verse 22 is the main scripture. For God's words are life unto those that find them, and they are health to all of your flesh. So God's word can take care of any issue that you're dealing with in your flesh. Uh, whether it's uh, cellular, whether it is uh, in your organs, whether it's with your blood system, whether it's with your skin, your hair, your bones, uh, your marrow, whether it is with a system in your body, whether it is with your little toe or with your, your, your thumb, uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, God's word is life and it's health. It's medication to all of your flesh. So God's word has healing remedies in it. It has a healing power in it. It has the power of Jesus uh, to, to bring healing to your body. And so before we get started tonight, let's go ahead and let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this evening. We thank you for this opportunity to minister your word. And Holy Spirit, I'm asking for your help. And I thank you that as I speak the word of God, that you just bring wisdom and revelation from the word to your people's hearts and minds. Uh, may you answer questions that they have. Uh, may they receive guidance and direction tonight by the holy written word of God and by your inspiration, Holy Spirit. So, Father, uh, we thank you. You have full. Uh, this is your service. Uh, this is your, your teaching. And so uh, I yield to you and I surrender to you tonight. And I thank you for your help in the mighty name of of Jesus, and they all said, amen. All right, so I want to preach this message from, uh, we started Friday night. Um, it was called God's Word is God's Will, and I want to make sure that I have the right page here on my notes. <clears throat> Let me go ahead and get this because it looks like, there we go, that's it. All right, so let's go to Matthew, the eighth chapter, in verses one through three. We were looking at a man who had leprosy, and, uh, and he had a, a very important question to ask Jesus. Um, he, he knew that Jesus was able, and so he had faith in Jesus' ability to heal him. Uh, but, but he didn't have faith in another area of, 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 of Jesus' uh, character and his nature. And uh, in Matthew, the eighth chapter, verses one through three, it says, when Jesus was come down from the mountain, uh, great multitudes followed Jesus. And behold, there came a leper and worshiped him. Now, what's interesting about this transition is that multitudes were following him. Um, but there was only one uh, that got Jesus' attention here. Notice out of the multitude, uh, there was just one, one with leprosy. 
And he came to Jesus and he bowed down before him and he began to worship him. So worship is just, you know, Lord, I love you. Uh, Jesus, I magnify your holy name. I exalt you. Uh, I, I know that you're the king of kings. I know that you're the Lord of lords. I know that you're the Messiah. Uh, uh, we see here uh, that he even says Lord. He didn't say teacher. He didn't say prophet. Uh, he, he didn't say, uh, hey, you, know, you know, the son of Mary. He, he said Lord. That word Lord there means master, commander. So he had an understanding of who Jesus was. It wasn't a total picture of who Jesus was, but he had a good picture. Number one, he said, you're, you're the Lord. You're the master over sickness and disease. And he says, if you will. Now notice that word if. Wherever there's the word if, normally there's some type of doubt connected to it. So this is the place in his faith that he doubted. He doubted Jesus' willingness to heal him. So that's why he asked him, if you are willing I know you're able, but if you're willing, you can make me clean. In verse 3, Jesus put forth his hand, and he touched the man with leprosy. And he said, I am willing, so be thou clean. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. So notice Jesus wasn't intimidated by the man's doubt or by the man's question. It was an honest question. It was a sincere question. He approached Jesus with reverence and with humility. He called him Lord. He called him Master. It wasn't a question of pride and arrogance and why am I not he healed and, you know, uh, or Jesus, this is your responsibility. Do this for me. I'm just waiting on you to do it. No, he came with a spirit of humility. He came with a spirit of, 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 of pliability. He wanted to be taught the word of God. He wanted to know where he could be missing it. And he said, Lord, if you are willing, then I know you can heal me. And so Jesus, of course, answered his question, and he, 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 he strengthened his faith. He strengthened the man's faith. He completed the man's faith. And because of that, the man was able to receive his healing. So what we need to do is incline our ears to Jesus' sayings. We need to incline our ears to Jesus' sayings. And there is something that I, I need to say before we continue in this, in this teaching uh, it, it's between verses 1 and 2. It says, when he was come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. And behold, there came just one man. One man. And, uh, you know, it doesn't matter if there's multitudes in this room that are co coming to this church to receive healing. You know, we have Billy Birkin, and he's a great healing evangelist. The gifts of the Spirit operate mightily in his ministry. And the working of miracles, the things that we've seen, the things that the Lord has, has manifested to us with his power and with his grace is just so wonderful. And uh, not many people get to experience what we've been able to experience in, in this church. And um, as far as the power of God goes. And, um, but but, but I, I want you to see uh, the Lord noticed one man. He noticed one man. And, and I believe tonight he notices you. He sees you. He knows exactly what you're going through, where you are. He, he knows the feelings that you're going through. He knows your emotions. He, he, he knows the thoughts that are going through your mind. He knows the questions that you have, and he's not intimidated by any of it. Uh, he came to set you free. He came to liberate you. Jesus came to destroy the works of the enemy in all of our lives. And so don't, 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 don't run away from the Lord uh, because of the situation that you're in. Uh, nothing in this world can fix the situation that you're in. Only Jesus can. Amen. And that's what this man did. He just came and he said, Lord, Lord, help me. Amen. And the Lord will help you tonight. So we have to incline our ears to the Lord's sayings. And uh, we have to, just go over here. We're now going to go to, uh, I believe it's Hebrews, the 12th chapter. Uh, but we need to incline our ears unto Jesus' sayings because that's exactly what Jesus is telling you tonight. Not only does he know you by name, uh, but he, he knows exactly what you're going through. He's not intimidated by it. He's not going to deny you of his goodness and his mercy and his healing power. No, just as Jesus said, I will to this leper, he says to you tonight, I will 
heal you. A lot of us have faith in Jesus' ability to heal, but we don't have faith in his willingness to heal. And so, uh, in John 14, 10, uh, let's go to Hebrews, the 12th chapter, and 1 John 14, 10. These were a few scriptures that we looked at uh, Friday evening. John 14, 10. Based upon this study in the word of God, uh, we know something about Jesus' life and ministry that was very important. Uh, and, and in verse 10 of John 14, it reveals it. Jesus said, Believe thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself. In other words, Jesus is saying, the words that I speak unto you. When Jesus was speaking these words to the leper, he was not speaking words that came from his own mind or, you know, words that he made up. Of, that he made up. Uh, these words did not come from himself, so they came from someone else. What did, who did they come from? But Jesus says here, but the Father that lives in me, the Father that lives in my spirit, he does the works, he gives me the words to say. So when Jesus was ministering to this leper, he wasn't giving him his opinion about the situation. He was giving him the will of God about the situation. He was not just saying, I'm willing to heal you, sir. But my father is also willing to heal you. Amen. And so we have to incline our ears unto Jesus' saying, because Jesus is revealing the Father's will on healing too. Whenever you look at the words of Jesus, whether it is in you know, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, or the, the epistles, what we find is the will of the Father. And so uh, when Jesus said, uh, I will, be thou clean, he's revealing to you tonight that it's God's will to heal you. And we said this Friday night, when you read through the four Gospels, uh, you never find Jesus denying somebody that's asks, asking for healing. Anybody that came to Jesus and said, I need your help. I, I, I need healing in my body. Uh, you know, uh, I, there's a, a demon-possessed man that Jesus came across or, so, or was brought to him. Not once did Jesus deny those people freedom. Not once did he send them away with what with then... Uh, not once did he send them away with something that, that, that wasn't good, that wasn't healing and wasn't God's mercy in their life. He never denied anybody. And so when we read through the four Gospels carefully, um, you won't find one single time where Jesus said, I'm not going to heal you. I won't deliver you. I won't set you free. No. Uh, Jesus proved time and time again that he's willing and that he's able. And so uh, Hebrews, the 12th chapter and verse 2. <clears throat> now Hebrews, the 12th chapter and verse 2. And then for those that are doing the scriptures, we're going to, the next verse or the next chapter that we're going to go to is Matthew, the 8th chapter and verses 1 through 3. <clears throat> but Hebrews 12, 2 first. All right. It says, looking unto Jesus, the author of, and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. So here the Bible instructs us to look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. So let's, let's go back to this leper uh, before we move on to Matthew, the eighth chapter. Um, the man came with incomplete faith. He had faith in Jesus' ability to heal him, but he didn't have faith in Jesus' willingness to heal him. And so what Jesus did in this, in this story is he finished his faith. He didn't leave his faith incomplete. He didn't say, hey, you got to figure this out all by yourself. No, what did Jesus do? For, 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 for Jesus started his faith because the man had to have heard about Jesus at some point. And then the man had enough courage to come to Jesus and say, look, I believe in your ability, but I don't believe in your willingness. Are you willing? Can you just tell me that you're willing? And if you do, if you tell me that you're willing, give me your word and I'll believe. So what did Jesus do? He finished his faith. So that's what Jesus does with us. He, he authors our faith. 
And he finishes our faith. And if your faith feels incomplete, guess what? Don't be intimidated. Don't run away from Jesus. Just get into the word. Allow him to finish your faith. Amen. Allow him to complete your faith. Allow him to settle the issue once and for all in your heart and in your mind that he is not only able, but that he is willing to heal you. Not just the leper, but you. You got to say, the Lord is willing to heal him. It's easy to say, I know you're able, Lord. I know you have the capability and the resources and the, the power and all of the universe to make these things work in my life. You're the creator of heaven and earth. I know you have legions of angels. I know you have many, many angels, millions of angels that can, that can do anything. But Lord, will you do it for me? That's a lot of times people have an issue with this in their faith. They, they believe he's able. And they believe he's willing for everybody else. But not for them. But I'm here tonight just to encourage you and to tell you through the word. God is willing to do it for you. And he's no respecter of persons. What he's done for one, he will also do for you. All right. Now let's go over to Matthew the 8th chapter. This is where we left off. Uh, a Friday evening, because uh, we're going to take a look at this centurion's faith, centurion's faith, <clears throat> and we'll go th from verses 5 through 10, and then verse 13, 5 through 10, and then verses 13. <clears throat> and it says here, and when Jesus was entered into Capernaum. Now this is where Jesus lived. This was his hometown. This was his place of residence. And uh, he entered into his hometown, you could say. Uh, and there came to him a centurion. A centurion was a leader in, in the armies. He was a, a captain, so to speak, I believe. And this man, he came to Jesus in need of something. Notice in verse 6, it says, and he said to Jesus, Lord, he didn't call him teacher, prophet. He didn't call him, you know, Mary's son. He called him Lord. Once again, this identifies, this shows us that this man understood something about Jesus. He understood something about his authority, his power, his ability. He understood something about the nature and the character of Jesus Christ. That he was the king of kings, the lord of lords, that he was the anointed one. And that sickness and disease was under Jesus' feet. Sickness and disease was under Jesus' authority. You don't use the word Lord because, you, you know, haphazardly. You call somebody that is a master. You call somebody that's in command. You call somebody that's in authority Lord. So this man understood who he was dealing with. And he, he, he said, he didn't say Jesus, even though he could have said, hey, Jesus. But look at the respect that he had for the authority that Jesus walked in. He said, Lord, I'm submitting myself to your authority, to your ability. I'm submitting myself under you, Jesus. I know you're the only one that can handle this situation for me. And I will call you Lord over my situation. Amen. Amen. And so uh, he says, Lord, my servant lieth at home, sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. So here was a, a young man who had a very, very uh, disturbing sickness or disease. Uh, he was bedridden. Uh, in one sense, he, you could say that he was uh, paralyzed and he was in great pain. He was in great suffering, great torment of his feelings and his emotions. And in verse 7, notice Jesus' answer. He said, I will come and heal him. So notice he uses that word again, I will. He didn't deny the man. He didn't deny the young boy from receiving healing. He said, I'll come right now to your home. Amen. And so, and he didn't just say, I want to have a cup of tea with you or I want to have lunch with you or I just want to see the condition that the young man is in. Notice the purpose that Jesus comes in to heal the young man. So he's willing to heal 
this young man that he has never met before, but he's just hearing about his condition. And in verse 8, it says, The centurion answered and said, Lord, I'm not worthy that you should come under my roof, but speak your word only, and my servant shall be healed. For I am a man under authority. I have soldiers under me, and I say to this man, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes, and to my servant, do this, and he does it. In verse 10, it says, when Jesus heard this saying, he marveled at the man and said, verily, verily, he marveled, to the, or he marveled at this man, and he said to those that followed him, verily, I say unto you. Now, he's not talking to the man here. He's talking to his disciples and to those that are following him. He may have turned around, and he said, I have not found so great a faith, no, not in all of Israel. Amen. Uh, verse, verse 9, just for elaboration, he said, I'm a man under authority. I'm submitted to my government's power. I'm submitted to one that is higher than I am. There's generals. There's a, a president that, that's above me. And my, my, my power uh, comes from them. And I have to submit myself underneath them. They give me the, the authority over the men that are underneath me. And these men understand that when I speak a word, they must obey me. They are under my authority. They're under my dominion. I have it by rule of the state and by rule of the king and by rule of the emperor of, of, of the nation that I'm, I'm, I'm of, that I serve. And, what, and then Jesus, he heard this because he immediately understood what the man was talking about. He just turned around and he said, this man has great faith. Not only does he believe that I'm willing, but he understands the power and the authority in my spoken word and my willingness to use it on anyone that needs help. Because he understands that sickness and disease is under the power of my word, just as his soldiers and servants are under the power of his word. Amen. Sickness and disease. We don't have to be afraid of it. You don't have to be afraid of it tonight. I don't care if you're dealing with cancer, paralysis. I don't care if you have a blood disease. I don't care if you have a headache. I don't care if you have migraines. I don't care if you have vision problems, hearing problems. I don't care if somebody came to you and said, you know what? You have a family genetic disease. You don't have to be afraid of any of it because it's all under, it's all under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. It all has to obey him and his word. Amen. And he's willing, he's willing tonight to heal you. Praise the Lord. When you know someone or something is under the authority of another, you don't have to be afraid of them, especially when you're on the same level as the one that's in authority. Jesus is our head. He's the head of the body, but we're part of the body. Amen. We're seated with Jesus in heavenly places. Let's go over there real quick before we continue talking about Jesus' willingness to heal. Let's just read that very quickly. Ephesians, the first chapter. Because you have to understand, you're not on the same levels as demons and sickness and disease and poverty and lack. and uh, You're on the same level as Jesus. You're seated with him in heavenly places, far above every name that can be named. Not only in this world, but also in the world to come. You do not have to be afraid of cancer. You do not have to be afraid of any kind of sickness or disease because it's under your feet. It's under your feet because you're part of the body of Christ. Ephesians, the first chapter and verse, uh, let's start with verse 19. <clears throat> and then we'll go back to Matthew, the eighth chapter, and we'll look at verse 13. And it says, and what is, that we might know and understand what is the exceeding greatness of his power to usward who believe, according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Jesus Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places, far above every principality and power and might and dominion and every name. Every name, not some names, not a few names, but every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. All right, let's keep on reading. 
And the Lord has put all things, verse 22, under Jesus' feet. That, that includes sickness and disease. And gave Jesus to be the head over all things to the church, which is his what? Body. The fullness of him that filleth all in all. You say, well, where, where do I fit into this equation? I, I didn't know that I was on the same level as Jesus. I thought I was on the same level as everybody in this world. And sickness and disease is just part of the life experience of humanity. No, just hold on one second. Now go with me to Ephesians, the second chapter. And uh, verse 4. Because you have to not only understand that Jesus is willing to heal you, but you have to understand uh, that, that, that uh, you don't have to be afraid of any sicknesses and diseases in your life or anything that's trying to attack you. Uh, verse 4 of second, or Ephesians, the second chapter. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us. I'm going to personalize that for you. But God, who is rich in mercy towards you, for his great love wherewith he loves you. Even when you were dead in sins, he quickened or made you alive together with Christ. By grace are you saved, and verse 6, and has raised you up together and made you sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So, okay. So that means if you're there in heavenly places with Jesus, he's the head, of course, of the body. You're, you're the, we're part of the body. That means sickness and everything that's under Jesus' feet is under our feet. So it's under your feet. You have authority. You have dominion over this sickness and disease. You don't have to put up with it. You don't have to be afraid of it. And you don't have to be concerned whether or not Jesus is willing to heal you because he is. Amen. Now let's go back to Matthew, the eighth chapter and verse 13 here. <clears throat> what did Jesus say to this to this centurion after he elaborated on the man's faith to his followers? He turned back in verse 13, and Jesus said unto the centurion, go your way. Go back home. Because as you have believed, so be it done unto you. And his servant was healed in the self same hour. So you, we have to believe that Jesus is willing, but we also have to believe that we have authority over sicknesses and diseases in our life. And you can't just let that authority reside in your spirit. You can't just allow your faith to reside in your spirit. Authority in the spirit, in the name of Jesus, and by the blood of the lamb, a uh, 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 faith that is in your spirit. It, it can't just be in your spirit. You've got to release it through your spoken word. you got to release it. Just as Jesus spoke to that young boy, and he said, be healed, or whatever word he used there. Really, he just told the man, go thy way. And as you have believed, so be it done unto you. He just spoke a simple word like that. Immediately, that young man was healed. And so we have the same authority and dominion over sickness and disease in our life. And, uh, and it works just like it worked for Jesus. So uh, uh, let's see here. Let's, let's examine this centurion just a little bit more. Again, Jesus said, I will heal him. Uh, verse Verse 7, and Jesus said unto him, I will come and heal him. All right, so he didn't say, I'm not going to heal him. I won't heal him. And so Jesus has never said, I will not heal you to anyone. Jesus never said that to anyone. If somebody came to him in faith and came to him willing to adjust and adapt to whatever instruction Jesus gave them, he was always able to heal them. So you'll notice that the centurion's answer was full of faith. His words demonstrated his faith. He didn't just keep faith in his heart. He released it 
through his mouth. Jesus didn't just keep his faith in his heart. He released it through his mouth. And a centurion in verse 8, he said this, these words, speak thy word only. Speak thy word only. And my servant shall be healed. So we could say it this way. Uh, the centurion inclined his ear unto Jesus' saying. He listened to what Jesus had to say. And then the centurion spoke words in line with what Jesus said. Notice this. Notice Jesus said, I will. I'll come and I'll heal him. The man said, no, that's okay. Just speak your word only and my servant shall be made whole. Notice the centurion did not disagree with Jesus. He didn't fight him on his willingness. He didn't fight him on his ability. You, you can't fight the word of God. You can't cast down the word of God. You just got to get yourself in alignment and agreement with whatever Jesus says and speak the word only. Release the word of God into your life and allow Jesus to minister health and healing to whatever you're going through in your physical body. Amen. And so the centurion inclined his ear. He did not debate, reason, or argue with Jesus. He just said, I believe your word, Jesus. And then Jesus said, such great faith. You have such great faith. So what is great faith? Let's talk about that for a moment. What is great faith? Let's talk about some ingredients to great faith. And it's found here in verse 8 of Matthew, uh, the 8th chapter. Uh, the centurion, he said, speak thy word only. So great faith is simply faith in God's word and really nothing else. Now, that doesn't mean that God can't use doctors and physicians and science to help you and to you know, uh, heal you. He, he can work through man. We're, Jesus said those that are sick need a physician. So we don't preach that here. I have to put that disclaimer on almost every message about healing because, you know, many times you have people that are dealing with life-threatening situations and they go, you know what, I, I'm, gonna, uh, I'm just going to do this by faith. Well, you know what? God, God gave us physicians to help us along so that we can stay alive and then we can learn how to receive our faith or re receive our healing by faith. And so, um, uh, you know, the ingredient to great faith here is found in the centurion's answer, speak the word only. Great faith is simply faith in God's word, whether you're going to chemo whether you're going, you know, through some type of medication, whether you're going to the doctor, uh, you have to be spirit led, but you also have to be full of faith. Because when that pain tries to attack you, when 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 Satan tries to come and lie to your mind, he's going to try to mix your faith with fear, with doubt and with unbelief. And you're going to have to fight a good fight of faith. And you're going to have to contend for your faith to keep it in God's word. And here it's just this simple. Speak the word only. <laughs> Speak the word only. If you don't have anything good to say, don't say it at all about your situation. Amen. I have a statement that the Lord gave me a couple years ago while I was preaching one Wednesday night. And it's simply this. Shut the failure up. Sometimes you just, <laughs> you got to shut the failure in your life up. Because if you speak failure in your life, if you speak doubt and unbelief, if you speak chaos and contention and troubling and, you know, strife, that's what you're going to have. That, those are the, the doors that you're going to open in your life and you're going to allow the enemy to come in and really do a, you know, a, a work on your mind. Don't do that. Shut, like we were talking about on Sunday, shut the door to the devil. Shut the fear, shut the door to fear, doubt, worry, anxiety, unbelief. And speak the word only. Yield to the word of God. Great faith is simply faith in God's word. And wherever your faith is, you may be dealing with a terminal disease tonight. Maybe your faith isn't there yet. It's not fully finished to receive total healing just like that. In fact, if you've been pressing in to the word of God to receive healing for an issue in your body and you haven't received it yet, be open to the leading of the Holy Spirit to go and get help from the doctor. Amen. Because, again, 
You can put your faith in the word and God can still use a man to help you that's educated. Amen. And so, but you want to make sure that you're speaking the word only. Great faith is simply faith in God's word. It is taking God at his word. Great faith is speaking God's word in faith and acting like the word is so. And God wants us to have the same great faith in his word that the centurion had in Jesus' words. God wants us to have confidence in the authority and the integrity of his word. And you're not going to get there overnight, especially if you've been talking doubt and unbelief for many months or many years. You've conditioned your heart to be full of doubt. You've conditioned your mind to be full of doubt. Now you're going to have to flush those things out, but it's okay. All you have to do is speak the word only to get your heart in agreement with the word. To get your mind in agreement with the word. To get yourself in a place of total confidence in the authority and the integrity of the word of God. You're going to have to. Uh, let's, let's go over here. I feel like we need to go over to this verse. Periodically we go over to this verse. But people go, well, how do I fight these thoughts that come? Especially when I'm in the battle. You know, pain. Oh, my word. I, I've seen some people in such great pain. They were unwilling to fight. I've seen such people in, in, in such uh, traumatic pain uh, that all they wanted was more pain medication so that they could just numb it out and numb it out and numb it out. And, 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 and hopefully they'll make it true. And, and some people are in such great pain. That's, that's the devil. That is an oppressive, depressive attack of the enemy against the human body. It's not right that a child of God suffer in any type of of pain. Uh, but what do you do when these thoughts of doubt and unbelief and the pain is so great? What do you do? You don't just, you, you can't settle for it. You can't succumb to it. Because if you do, then you can actually yield yourself to greater pain. Either you got to turn on something, you got to turn on the word, you got to turn on a teaching tape, and you got to be careful. If you're in a life threatening situation, this is the, the most important, these are some of the most important moments of your life about what you see, about what you hear, about who you fellowship with. You don't have time to waste. You better keep your eyes on the word and your ears on the word. Because if you, if, if Satan, he knows that if he can just get your attention on destruction, then he can get you to yield and settle for a pity party. He can get you to yield and settle for more pain in, in the situation that you're in. And that's how he gets people to yield to death, premature death. So while you're in it, you've got to fight the good fight of faith. How do you do that? 2 Corinthians, the 10th chapter. 2 Corinthians, the 10th chapter, verses 4 through uh, uh, 5, I believe it is. Now let's start with verse 3. <clears throat> He said, for though I walk in the flesh, I do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of my warfare are not carnal. They're not flesh and blood, but they are mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds. Verse 5, casting down every imagination, every thought, every idea that is exalting itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. So when Satan comes and he says, no, you're going to die because of this. When Satan comes and he tries to increase the pain. When Satan comes and he tries to torment you with lying thoughts of unbelief and doubt. What do you do? Do you just sit there and listen to him? No, you have to go to this scripture and say, I'm pulling down these strongholds of lies and unbelief. I'm casting down every thought, every imagination of doubt and unbelief, of sickness and disease, of poverty and lack. I cast down every, I pull out, I rip out every issue that may be hidden in my heart or my soul that I'm not aware of. Anything that would hinder my faith from working, I rip it out in the name of Jesus. I speak to that mountain and I command it to come out. Be cast into the sea of Jesus' precious blood. I tear down every exalting thought that sets itself up against the true knowledge of God, and I take my mind and I bring it into captivity to every thought 
to the obedience of Christ. Sometimes your mind, your carnal mind is going to want to settle for that pain. Sometimes your carnal mind is going to want to settle for that sickness and disease. And it's going to want to have a pity party. It's going to want to find the company of misery. Don't do that. Those are all lies and influences of the enemy to steal victory from you, to steal faith from you. When that victim idea comes into your mind, when a lie comes into your mind, you cast it down with your mouth. And you say, I'm not taking your lie, Satan. My Jesus is willing. In fact, he healed me 2,000 years ago. 1 Peter 2.24 says, by his stripes, I am healed. I'm already healed. It may not look like it in my flesh. It may not look like it in my body, in my organs right now, in my bones. But by his stripes, he already healed me. And I believe that I have received my healing. I have my healing right now. Now, devil, I'm not receiving your lies and your thoughts. You're not gaining a foothold in my mind. I'm setting my mind on things above where Jesus is seated at the right hand of God. Uh, He is the head. I'm the body. I'm seated there with him. Sickness, disease, and pain is under my feet, and I have authority over it. Jesus already took care of this matter 2,000 years ago. And in the name of Jesus, I cast down this sickness and disease, and I cast down these lying thoughts. And any hindrances of faith that may be in my heart or my soul that I'm not aware of at this moment, I rip them out in the powerful, wonderful name of Jesus, and I cast them into the blood of Jesus. I'm a believer. I'm not a doubter. I believe God's word. I speak the word of God only. And I'm fighting the good fight of faith. And I'm not giving up. And I'm not quitting. And I'm resisting you with a steadfastness, Satan. You're not having this body. I'm not settling for what you want to do in this body. You've got to resist in the wonderful name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. This centurion said, speak your word only. He didn't say, just believe the word, Jesus. He said, speak, release what you believe with your mouth. He didn't say, pray for me. He said, speak to my situation, praise God. (laughs) Praise the Lord Jesus. God wants us to have this same great faith in his word that the centurion had in Jesus' words. It is a total confidence in the authority and the integrity of the word of God. You have to see, that's another thing that you've got to put your faith in. The authority and the integrity of this word. God cannot lie. He can't lie. He has never told a lie ever. And he's been around forever. (laughs) He has a very good track record of speaking the truth, holding to the truth, and never You know, shading the truth. He speaks it just like he wants it. He never lies. And he's never going to lie to you. He's not going to start with you. So you don't have to doubt whether or not God's word is true or not. You just have to believe. This is final authority. I don't care what the doctors say. I don't care what Satan says. I don't care what my family says. I don't care what my mind and my flesh say. God's word is what I'm standing upon. And if everything else in my life goes down the drain, like Brother Copeland says, he says, if if it looks like everything is sinking in your life, the word of God is big enough to block up the drain. And when all is said and done, the only thing that you'll that'll that'll be standing is you and the word of God. But everything else that is bad in your life is going to go down the drain. Amen. You won't have to deal with it again. You won't have to face it because you, you've you've gained the victory over it. You've stood upon the word of God and you've refused to quit and to give up. Amen. Everything else though, it's got to sink. Everything that is not of God's got to sink. It's got to go down that drain. Praise the Lord. But you're not. The word of God will keep you standing. Because of the centurion's great faith, Jesus could say to him, go your way. And as you have believed, so be it done unto you. And we see how quickly the word of the Lord worked. It it worked within the, the same hour. The same hour. So once you get into total faith, it doesn't take long for the word of God to work. But remember, Jesus is the author and he is the finisher of our faith. 
So you've got to stick with the word of God. Verse 9, uh, let's go to, uh, <clears throat> so Jesus, let's see, if you, <clears throat> all right, the next place that we're going to go is Matthew, the 8th chapter in verses 14 through 17. I'm going to elaborate just a little bit more on uh, on this centurion's faith, but for those that are doing the scriptures, Matthew 8, 14 through 17. So what Jesus is saying you, or what, is, what he is saying to you today or tonight is this, go your way. As you have believed, so be it done unto you. Go your way. As you have believed, so be it done unto you. And, and I'll, I'll put this in there. Uh, not everybody's faith is on the same level. You know, for instance, Pastor Jerry uh, you know, she's she's right now standing in faith for something uh, for her back, and she's seen some great progress. And, and so we've been praying, believing God, speaking the word over her. She's been doing that like constantly, and uh, and she's seen some wonderful progress. In between uh, standing upon the written word of God, she's also been opening her heart and saying, Lord, how am I supposed to deal with this situation? Is there anything that I need to do? Do I need to see a doctor? Do I need to see a chiropractor? Do I need to, uh, you know, get any type of medication? How, how am I supposed to naturally tend to this situation? So it's not just she's a stickler for the word. She's also a stickler for the leading of the Holy Spirit. You see? And so in her own heart, the Lord has spoken certain things to her about this situation. Now, I'm not going to reveal all of that because that's between her and the Lord. And when she wants to, she's going to reveal it to you. You know she is. She's going to come with her revelation and with her teaching from the Holy Spirit. And, and she's going to just, we're, we're just going to be in here for a moment. And we're all going to like pause and have to think about the wisdom that comes out of her words or out of her mouth. But you see, uh, she has a relationship and a fellowship with the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is, 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 is a physician to her. It, he's teaching her and showing her how to take care of this situation. And she's standing upon the word of God. That's how we're supposed to take care of every situation in our life. Now, her faith for this situation, it, it might be in a different place than where your faith would be if you had the same situation. You know, you got to find out how the Lord wants to lead you in health and healing. Your faith, you might be dealing with cancer tonight. You might be dealing with a terminal disease and you know, well, you know what? I don't have the faith to completely receive my healing right now. That's completely fine. Find out where your faith is located. Is your faith in going through the whole entire process of, of getting the treatments and everything? Okay. Then let, if that's where your faith is, if that's what the Holy Spirit is leading you to do, then go ahead and say, Father, I'm, I'm thanking you according to your word that there's going to be a supernatural transaction between Holy Spirit power and this chemo. I'm believing, Father, that it's not going to, to have the same side effects that it has on everybody else. See, you got to find out where your faith is. Some people, they can't believe God to heal something in their stomach, so, but they can believe God to go through a surgery to have stomach surgery. So what do you do there? You say, Father, you, do, you stand upon the word of God and you say, Father, I know Jesus provided for me healing. So I believe that I received healing in the name of Jesus. Now how you operate that in my life or administrate that in my life, you know what? This is where my faith is. So be it unto me according to your word. But I do know this, that your supernatural power can work through the hands of these men and these women. And I know this. That your supernatural power will be upon me on that operating room. I know this. That your supernatural power will be on me when they sew me back up together. And I know this. That my time of recovery will be supernatural in the name of Jesus. Because that's where my faith is. Be it unto me according to thy word. See, sometimes we shoot for the stars when our faith is just right here on, on, right here on, on, on ground zero, so to speak. you got to locate where your faith is at. But God will work with you, and it will be done unto you according to your faith. He, 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 he has so many different ways, so many different methods of transmitting his healing power when we simply believe. Sometimes we limit him. We put him in a box. 
We put him in so many boxes and we say, this is how you got to heal me, God. This is when you got to heal me. No, he said in Mark 11, 23 and 24, he said, speak to the mountain. Believe in your heart. Don't doubt in your heart. But believe that what you say shall come to pass and it shall come to pass. And then he said, when you pray, believe that you receive the thing that you desire. And then you will have what you have believed. Or, and then you shall have it. Meaning the believing part is to, up to you. It's up to me. That's our responsibility. Believe the word of God. Find out where our faith is located and then just trust the Lord. Be led by the Spirit. There's been times in my life where I've been able to believe God for supernatural healing in my life without any help. But then there's other times that the Lord has specifically led me. You need to go to this doctor. I had to wait before the Lord. And I said, Lord, where am I missing it? And he said, I'm going to show you exactly where you're missing it. Right in this area. And I'm not going to tell you where the Lord told me that I'm missing it. <laughs> he said, you got to deal with this first before you're able to receive total healing in that area. But I'm leading you to go to this doctor. And I want you to see this person. And I want you, they're going to help you out. And don't you worry about a thing. Because I'm with you through it all. And my word is still true. And don't you worry about it. Amen. The Lord is so good and merciful. He's willing to heal us no matter where our level of faith is. Praise God. You might just have a little faith tonight. But be it unto you according to your faith. Because Jesus has not changed his character or his nature. He is still saying, I will heal. I will. It's my will to heal you. But be it unto you according to where your faith is. Amen. Praise the Lord. I hope that makes sense to you because it'll free up a lot of people. Sometimes we put so much stress and pressure on the word of faith people. Well, I got to believe God for this and this is the only way. Have you checked in with the leading of the Holy Spirit yet? Have you asked him, uh, how do you want this to be administered in my life? We got, we're sticklers for the word, but we got to be sticklers for the spirit. And here's the beautiful part about it. Your faith may not be exactly where, you know, I can, re I can receive divine healing from cancer right this moment. Your faith might be halfway there. It might be a quarter of the way there. But wh wherever it is, wh wh wherever your, whatever your faith is in, according to the word of God, uh, God will supernaturally move in your life, heal you. And then you know what? You'll go to the next level of faith. You go from faith to faith. To glory, to glory. Amen. God doesn't leave you where you were at. You just keep on going on and upward with the Lord. You just keep on getting stronger in faith. And you get to the point where you can take on things. And you can believe God for big things in your life. But if you're not there, it's okay. There's no condemnation, no judgment. Just remember this. Be it unto you according to wherever your faith is tonight. Be it unto you according to wherever your faith is tonight. And may you be released in the name of Jesus from that bondage that is trying to live up to someone else's faith. May you be released from that condemning spirit that is trying to tell you that you don't have the faith to receive it. No, you have the God kind of faith even tonight to receive your miracle. Be it unto you according to your faith and right where your faith is at. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Don't let Satan steal what God wants to do in your life. Praise the Lord Jesus. What, what time is it? It's 830. I think we got to go here. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord Jesus. Sometimes we overcomplicate faith. Sometimes we overcomplicate the character and the nature of God and his willingness to heal. You know, sometimes we overcomplicate how God can work in our life. God is God. He can do whatever he wants, whenever he wants, if we simply believe. You could be going to the doctor. And you're, you've been, you know, you've been led by the Spirit to go to the doctor and to go through treatment. But you've also been standing upon the Word of God, speaking to your situation. And it could be that, you know, you go through some type of treatment and it only took you two months instead of the, you know, the three months or the four months. See, it, it, God's supernatural power is mixed with whatever you're going through. And it, it, it speeds things up. It advances things. It helps things. Amen. 
Praise the Lord. <clears throat> so let's go over to, uh, in closing, let's go over to Matthew, the 8th chapter, verses 14 through 17. And it says here, in, and when Jesus was come into Peter's house, so he was in one of his disciples' homes, he saw his wife's mother laying down. So he saw his mother-in-law. He saw Peter's mother's uh, mother-in-law laying on the couch or laying on a bed. And what was she sick of? A fever. She had coronavirus, let's just say. <laughs> you know, she had COVID-19. Uh, she, she, she was sick of a fever. No, notice, notice verse 15. He wasn't afraid of the fever. He wasn't afraid of the sickness and the disease or the virus she was dealing with. What did he do? He touched her. He touched her. He just took her hands, and the fever left her, and she arose, and she ministered unto them. And let's go to verse 16 and 17 here. Jesus is not afraid. Uh, you know, this, 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 this is possibly a virus that she's dealing with. She has some type, let's just say, a plague of some sort. What did Jesus do? It, but I want, you to, I want you to see this. Jesus always moved according to these people's faith. He always met them at the level of faith they were at. This woman was sick on a bed. She couldn't help herself. He came to her. He lifted up her hand and held it like this, transmitted the anointing, the healing anointing of the Holy Spirit. Uh, here in this, this, this chapter, it doesn't say he said anything, although he could have. Uh, I'm, I'm not remembering the other, uh, the, the, the other gospel's accounts. But he, he took her hand and he transmitted that healing anointing. And she rose up immediately. He wasn't afraid of that sickness and that disease. He didn't go, you know what, you did this to yourself. He didn't go, I don't have time for that right now. I'm too busy. I have, so much, I have a ministry to take care of. Jesus always had time for the people. He always had time to minister God's willingness and faithfulness to the people. Amen. And that's the same Jesus that we're dealing with today. He has time for you. He's not denying you. He's not saying, no, I can't do this. I'm not, I'm not willing to do this. He's always willing. And he'll meet you right where you are with whatever faith level you have so that you can receive divine healing. Now let's look at verses 15 and, or, uh, 16 and 17. When the even was come, they brought unto Jesus many that were possessed with devils. And he cast out the spirits with his word. And he healed all that were sick. So that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet saying. Jesus himself took our infirmities. And bore our sicknesses. I, I have a different, a slight different saying for this scripture. I, I, like, I like how it says he took your infirmity and he bore your sicknesses. But when you look it up in different translations, it means he drove them out. He drove them out by the power of the Holy Spirit and by the spoken word. He casted that sickness and disease out of bodies. He casted the devils out, the oppressed mind, the insane. Those that, were, those that were stricken with mental illnesses. He didn't go up to them and touch them. He spoke a word to them. And he casted them out. 
He drove them out. Amen. And then he's still in the same business from here. He has spoken his word. And he's asking us, will you agree? Will you just speak my word? My word will do the same thing tonight that it did 2,000 years ago. It'll drive out that sickness and disease. It'll drive out that fever. It'll drive out that coronavirus. It'll drive out that issue that you're dealing with in your systems and the systems of your body. Uh, Jesus came to drive out the work of the enemy, to destroy the work of the enemy in your life. He is willing. He is able. And the only question is left tonight is, will you simply believe him? Will you simply believe him with the level of faith that you have? Wherever your faith, you've got to identify where your faith is. Amen. And he'll work with you. And he'll be, he'll be the same, he'll, he'll, he'll do the same thing he did 2,000 years ago. And what we see here also, and this is the closing, this is the last point before we, we, we take up the tithes and the offerings tonight and we pray. Jesus wasn't just willing to heal the one. Notice the multitudes were brought to him, many, lots of people, hundreds, if not thousands. And in that, and, and of course, in, in, that, in, that, uh, in that setting, he may have not been able to come down and touch every single one of them. He may have not been able to lay his hands and transmit the anointing and the gifts of the spirit to every single one of them. But, no, but, but like I just said, he spoke a word. And the word had the anointing in it to heal all of them. Not one of them walked away with sickness, with disease, with the devil in them, with, uh, you know, everyone walked away with their life changed. Not one was denied. Not one was denied. Jesus didn't deny Peter's mother-in-law. He didn't deny the leper. He didn't deny the centurion who was coming in faith, interceding for his servant. He didn't deny the multitudes. He always was the same with every person. He was always willing, willing to heal. Amen. He's willing tonight. He's not changed. Praise the Lord. I believe many of you, I believe many of you have a a weight that is off your shoulder tonight where you've been trying to fight a battle with someone else's faith. You're free to fight the good fight of faith with your faith in the word of God and with, with the level of faith, wherever, wherever your faith is located. Amen. Whatever you want God to do in your life, that is what he is willing and what he is able. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus. Let's uh, let's do this before we. Uh, <clears throat> Try what do we do next, Lord? All right, we're going to do this before we take up the tithe and the offering. I want to pray for you. I'm just going to release the healing power of Jesus, and you receive right there from wherever you're watching, and uh, no, believe. Believe that he's willing. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you for this evening. We thank you for your healing touch, for the anointing of the Holy Spirit uh, to go over. We release it right now in the name of Jesus. We send it forth over these airwaves. And Father, we, we thank you in the name of Jesus. That same healing anointing is in this place tonight and within your people's homes. It's being released onto their bodies in the name of Jesus. We release that anointing, that healing anointing. We curse pain. We drive out pain in the name of Jesus. We drive out sickness and disease in the name of Jesus. We drive out fear and oppression in the name of Jesus. Be healed. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus.
by the stripes that wounded Jesus, you are healed and you are made whole. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Skin conditions. Skin conditions. In the name of Jesus. Skin conditions. We speak to skin conditions. We curse you in the name of Jesus. We drive you out of God's people's, of, 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 of people's bodies tonight in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We speak to bones. We speak to tendons and ligaments. We speak to organs. We speak to blood flow. In the name of Jesus. We speak to your lungs. Speak to your back and your neck. We command your body to be healed. And we drive out with the name of Jesus any type of issues and pain. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Glory to your name. And be it unto you according to your faith. Be it unto you according to your faith. Glory to God. Ah, all right. Well, um, we're going to take up the offering right now. We're going to open up uh, this next section of the, the teaching, the message. Um, and i uh, going to give you an opportunity to give. You can give by way of wordsoflife.com. You can mail it in. You can go to P.O. Box. Or I mean, you can mail it in and write P.O. Box 630 uh, Miami, Florida, 33163. That's P.O. Box 630-790, Miami, Florida, 33163. You can also give by way of text. You can text WOL Church to 77977 and uh, just follow the prompts. You can also come uh, Sunday mornings and uh, we are open. You can worship the Lord through your tithes, through your offerings, through your gifts um, right here um, at the altar and present them in person. Uh, but let's go ahead and uh, let's pray over the offerings and the tithes tonight, and then we'll, we'll go. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you uh, for your people's gifts this evening. We receive them um, on this earth, but we thank you, Lord, that as we receive them, um, as your ambassadors and as your representative, Jesus receives them in heaven. And Father, we thank you uh, that their, your, their tithes are in Jesus' hands. You have, they have honored you. They have worshipped you. They have given to you, Father, out of willingness. Uh, they have honored the covenant of blessing that you have made with them through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. So, Father, we thank you that your windows of heaven are open, all of them. And you're pouring out that blessing that they have not room enough to receive. And we just declare and decree that every need that they have is supplied this week. In the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord. There's no lack, there's no want in their life because you are their good shepherd and you're providing for them, you're caring for them, you're taking care of them with tender love in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. It's your good pleasure uh, to give your people, to show your people the riches of the kingdom and the riches of this world. You take delight in the prosperity of your people. So, Father, we give this to you tonight, and we thank you for your blessing upon your people in the name of Jesus. And they all said, amen. All right, well, <clears throat> that's, that's all there is for this evening. I pray that the word of God ministered to you, and uh, we're thankful that you joined us this evening. Um, as a quick reminder, tomorrow morning there will be no prayer, but I will be back with you Friday morning. Um, at 7.30 a.m. Also, Pastor Sam, if you've tuned in in the middle of the service, uh, Pastor Samuel Rodriguez uh, has been postponed until March. We're very sorry about that. So that's why um, he's not preaching tonight. And tomorrow morning and tomorrow night, he will not be with us. Uh, so he has been postponed. All right. Um, but we love you. 
We bless you. And remember, you win in life by speaking words of life. Have a wonderful night. Bye-bye.